Okay, three, two, one. Oh my goodness. Good morning, good afternoon. Whatever it is for you, I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Zach Schaumler. This is Strong Opinion Sports, episode 468. Apparently, the other day, like two episodes ago, I said 666, which is totally wrong. It's like, I think it's like a, the devil number. I guess we will reach, in like 200 episodes, we'll get there. But we're not there yet. I jumped the gun a little bit by accident. Um, I don't know what that foreshadowed about that episode. Apparently, it didn't show up on Spotify, so maybe I cursed it. I don't know. Uh, this will be a very short episode today. Um, mostly, we're just talking about there are one, two, three, four, five big news stories. Then I'll preview the Formula One season a little bit. Uh, it's casual Saturday, I guess. I'm wearing the most casual shirt I have ever worn on this show. I'm wearing literally just a workout shirt. Um, the big thing today we need to talk about, maybe I should have worn a nice shirt for this topic. I don't know. It's a weird one to cover. I'm not entirely sure. It's actually the first time I've really said much about it um, in over a year. NFL quarterback Deshaun Watson has been cleared of all criminal charges by a grand jury in Texas. He will face no criminal charges uh, after 22 women made allegations related toward sexual misconduct, uh, ranging all the way from touching to forced oral sex during apparently massage appointments. I mean, you have 22 people giving you massages. That feels like a massive number already. I'm not a professional athlete, but like you, you can't just get one person you like and stick with it. I don't know. Um, the whole story, there's no good way to like, even, I feel like even making like a weird comment like that, there's nothing good to say about the story. And I'm going to stick to my script and be very careful here. Um, Deshaun Watson's lawyers have said that there was sexual activity during the massages, uh, but nobody was forced to participate. Um, look, I, I have intentionally stayed away from this story for over a year. I wanted to wait until it reached its conclusion and then we could talk about the result. And the result appears to be uh, that he will face no criminal charges. And so the result is that Deshaun Watson, a current member of the Houston Texans, is likely going to return to playing in the NFL. He wants a trade. He did not play at all last year. Houston found a rookie quarterback, Davis Mills, that appears to be there new future franchise quarterback. It's worth noting that before all of this went down, I really liked Deshaun Watson. I really liked, I, I, he was a very appealing person. I was, I was, uh, I liked the guy. And so this is very uncomfortable for me to talk about. I am going to quote a tweet from Adam Schefter, basically Adam Schefter's apology tweet after he gave a, a, a recap of the scenario in a way that people didn't like. Uh, Schefter said this. He said, a lack of indictment alone does not mean someone is innocent. So I ask, is Deshaun Watson a good guy? I mean, I, I really have no idea. I've never met him. Uh, I will say this. If 22 separate women, and let's put it lightly, accused me of sexual misconduct, I would have to seriously reevaluate who I am as a person. I would have to really look inside and I would not be able to feel like a hero. Um, I, I would be asking like, how must I have miscommunicated that badly that 22 women felt that way about me? If I was him, that's how I would, I would try to feel. I'd be like, man, I can't believe I was that bad at miscommunicating. So with Deshaun Watson having... 22 women accuse him of that stuff. I have a hard time imagining that where there is smoke, there is not also fire. Is he a good guy? <sighs> Yikes, man. I, how do you answer that question? How do you, I hate talking about this stuff. I'm a sports guy. I'm not a legal guy. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a cop. I'm not a psychologist. I talk about quarterbacks for a living. That's what I do. And I, I know that based on that qualification, Deshaun Watson is an incredibly talented quarterback. I know that for sure. Um, 
it's possible he was wrongfully accused. How can I make that judgment? Again, it's an ugly mess. I'm not a lawyer. I, I shared as much as I feel comfortable talking about. Like, again, if someone, if I was accused of that 22 times, I'd be like, man, what, what the heck did I do as a person? I, I screwed up tremendously. And I, I, I get it that probably in a legal sense, you can't come out and admit that. Unfortunately, in our criminal justice system, it's a mess. I, I get this whole thing is awful. Um, and... The only thing I can really say is that because Deshaun Watson has been freed of all criminal charges, he will likely play in the NFL again. It goes from a non-football story, which is probably the last time I'm ever going to talk about the non-football side of the story, to now it's a football story again. Deshaun Watson is going to play quarterback again in the NFL most likely. He's 26 years old. He'll be 27 when the next season starts early on. I think I believe his birthday is in September. And... Whether you like the guy or not, you can decide all that yourself. He is one of the most talented quarterbacks on planet Earth. There's like he's he's maybe one of 15 human beings on planet Earth that can play the quarterback position at that high of a level. And again, in the football world, quarterback is the most important position. So his return to the NFL, whether you like it or not, is a really big deal. And I am certain that some NFL team is going to trade a lot to make Deshaun Watson their new franchise quarterback. Is it messy? Is it make my stomach feel good? None of it makes my stomach feel good. But probably Pittsburgh or Carolina is going to make a move and get Deshaun Watson. Carolina is more desperate. Carolina's head coach, Matt Rule, is on the hot seat. Their team is not great. They've had Four losing seasons in a row. Carolina's going to give up the most to try to make a move to get Deshaun Watson. I hope he goes to Pittsburgh because I really like and respect the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mike Tomlin. I would like Mike Tomlin to have influence over Deshaun Watson. Uh, and Pittsburgh also, it's worth noting, they're a better football team. They're more likely to win with Deshaun Watson as their quarterback. Now, the Colts are in a quarterback market as well. The Colts need a new quarterback. But they're in the same division as the Houston Texans, their division rivals. So I cannot imagine Houston would trade Deshaun Watson to a division rival and then have to play him two times a year. So the Colts quarterback options are more likely Kirk Cousins, Marcus Mariota, Jordan Love. You hear Derek Carr's name thrown around a lot. But Deshaun Watson going to the Colts, in my opinion, is simply off the table and not going to happen. Could another team come out of nowhere and make a move for him? The Giants, maybe, Seattle. I mean, the names are being thrown out there a ton. But what I want to tell you is that it appears that a really big Deshaun Watson trade is on the horizon. And, you know, off the field stuff aside, because, again, the story is shifting from a non-football story to a football story once again. As far as football is concerned... He's 26 years old. He is one of the most talented quarterbacks on the planet. And so I want you guys to know, prepare for a trade soon. He will be probably a franchise quarterback again in the NFL for somebody. Uh, that is the result of this, uh, uh, you know, the dropping of the charges, the, the lack of criminal charges that Sean Watson will face. And uh, I, I can't determine whether he's a good guy or not. The signs are pointing towards not, <laughs> right? That's, uh, I can't imagine... Having 22 women accuse me of that um, and, and how badly I must have screwed up for that to have possibly happened. So, um, and it's, it, why, did I, why did I point it at me somehow? Deshaun Watson's the one getting accused of that stuff. And it's messy. I, I don't feel good about any of it. Uh, but at the end of the day, football is going to continue. You know, it's going to, people are going to move forward. He's going to be a franchise quarterback in the NFL again more than likely and uh, that is the, the now, finally, after a year of not covering the store, we got an update. Looks like Deshaun Watson is heading back to the NFL. Uh, now, there's actually another story. And by the way, I look, I try to cover that stuff as best I possibly can. There's no right way to say that. It's a very political topic. It's a very... I don't know. It's a non-football story. Everything about Deshaun Watson for the last year has been not about football. So 
Um, uh, and in one sense, maybe I'm, I'm glad the story is shifting towards football again. But I, I hate talking about stuff that's not football. My show is about football. My show is not about a- anything other than sports. And so uh, I, hope I, I hope I did well. I didn't mean to offend anybody if I did. I, I try to be honest and open and um, very straightforward. Um, and I, I want people to know that I did the best I could covering that story. But I, I don't really know how to cover that one. That's, that's, a, that's a wild one. I'm not a lawyer. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. I, I don't, I, I just, uh, I, I want you guys to know that I did the best I could there, but I don't really know how to cover a story like that very well yet. And I, I don't know that I ever am going to be comfortable, um, covering a story like that. Cause I don't like stories like that. Uh, they make me sick to my stomach and I'm kind of okay with that. Cause I don't ever want to get to a point where I can, um, you know, just very coldly tell you the facts. I, I can't, remove my opinion from it. I'm, and also, I, I'm not a journalist. I'm, a, I'm an opinionist, whatever that means. I, I, I sling my opinion around. I'm an analyst, I guess. Um, I, I really, really admire Bob Costas. I've been watching a lot of Bob Costas interviews, and I watched, uh, I actually listened to a Jerry Sandusky Bob Costas interview the other day. It is incredible, incredible interviewing skills and journalism uh, on, on the half of Bob Costas. I don't even hold a candle to anybody like Bob Costas. And I, I would love to hear how someone like Bob Costas would cover the Deshaun Watson story, honestly, but I want you guys to know I did the best I could. Um, and I, and I hope that's good enough for you. But if I, if I said the wrong thing, or I, you know, say turned, you know, somehow offended somebody, that was not my intention. Um, it's just news that I don't really know how to cover very well. Let's shift gears. En- enough of that. It's been 12 minutes already. Uh, here's another story, also out of Texas, by the way. Former Vikings corner Jeff Gladney has been found not guilty by a jury on a felony assault charge. I guess we're going to cover Deshaun Watson and Jeff Gladney back to back. We'll get the, the felony criminal stuff out of the way now. So Jeff Gladney not found guilty or found, sorry, found not guilty by a jury on a felony assault charge. In April 2021, he was charged with domestic violence after uh, allegedly assaulting his former girlfriend. And after his arrest last year, he was immediately cut by the Minnesota Vikings. Normally, when this happens to like a backup player, it doesn't get attention. The reason why Jeff Gladney is worth mentioning is because he was a first round pick in the 2020 NFL season. And he played one year as rookie year for the Minnesota Vikings. And then this happened last April. He got cut, did not play at all last year. It appears that he is likely going to return to the NFL. And he's a guy who at one point was viewed very favorably going into the NFL. There is some talent there. I'm curious what his future is. Um, His agent made a statement that he would wish that people would treat athletes the same way the criminal justice system does, which is that you are innocent until proven guilty. I don't think the sports world is ever going to do that because – when your reputation is stained and you risk losing fans because you got this guy in your team who's been accused of domestic violence, um, you're risking losing fans. And so that is why the Vikings cut him. I think ultimately they probably had a zero tolerance policy. Like we're not dealing with that. Uh, so they cut him. Uh, but it looks like he has been, well, it doesn't look like he has been found not guilty. And it looks like Jeff Gladdy will return to the NFL. And I'm, I'm interested to see what he does because, again, at one point, first-round pick, really, really talented guy who was very versatile as a corner, and uh, I, I, we'll see what happens there. Okay, uh, the heavy stuff, all done. 14 minutes, we got through it. All the heavy, dirty laundry, the, the criminal stuff, the stuff I don't like talking about in this podcast. We've, we've now moved through it. Um, we got three fun stories to talk about next. Number one is this. Raiders defensive end Max Crosby was given a massive contract extension. I am so excited for this guy. Four years, $95 million, $53 million guaranteed. Good for him. Uh, It's a really cool story because this contract got signed and the news came out all on March 11, 2022. The exact two-year anniversary of Max Crosby's sobriety. He literally has the date 3-11-2020 tattooed on his right hand as a reminder to constantly always have in front of him, which I, it's incredible. 
So now the day 311 has an even greater meaning. It's the day that he got paid generational wealth, money that will set him up for the rest of his life. It's a very cool story. He's 24 years old, 25 in August. Max Crosby is a really cool story. He's a guy, by the way, in Vegas, which is a very, if you have a, a sobriety issue, I wouldn't think Vegas is the first place you would want to play football in the NFL, but he, look, he's been very disciplined, done a really good job. Max Crosby is getting better and better on the football field. He's a very easy player to like. And uh, I just think it's a feel-good story. It's like, awesome, man. This guy got his act together um, and is really doing well and just got paid um, more money than I could even imagine smelling in my entire life. So good for Max Crosby. That is incredible, and I am very, very happy for him. Here's a wild one. Pass rusher Khalil Mack has been traded from the Chicago Bears to the L.A. Chargers. I've already talked about this, but last time I was reacting live in the moment, there were some key details that I think were not included. Uh, Now we have more details in the trade and on the trade. The Bears get a 2022 second round pick for this upcoming draft and a 2023 sixth round pick for next year. And the Chargers, of course, get stud pass rusher Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack is 31 years old. I would have thought he was worth a first-round pick in a world where we saw Jamal Adams go for, I mean, a younger player, sure, but go for multiple first-round picks. Um, I think it's pretty clear the reason why Chicago made this move is because they are rebuilding. They are trying to clear his salary off of their, just trying to get rid of his salary altogether. Again, 31 years old. Khalil Mack is over a $17 million salary cap hit this upcoming year in 2022. In 2023, he's almost $23 million in 2024. The year after that, he's over $23 million in a salary cap hit. It's a big contract. Chicago didn't want to pay it anymore. They're rebuilding. And for LA, it's a fairly low trade cost. Sure, you got to pay the guy. But to give up a second round pick and a sixth round pick to get a guy who makes your football team dramatically better immediately, I think is a pretty low cost. And... I think it makes sense for the Bears. It it signals they're completely rebuilding. It makes sense for, you know, the L.A. Chargers because their division is an arms race. The Raiders made the playoffs last year. Uh, Kansas City did as well. They also have Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. Denver just got Russell Wilson at quarterback. This move appears to be the response to all of the stuff going on in their division by L.A. They're like, look, we got to do something. We got to compete. And we didn't even make the playoffs last year, so we got to be even better next year. And it's kind of cool, too, because L.A. Chargers head coach Brandon Staley knows Khalil Mack very, very well because they worked together in 2018 in Chicago when Brandon Staley was the Chicago Bears linebacker coach directly coaching Khalil Mack. And Brandon Staley multiple times has been very outspoken about Khalil Mack, talking about how much Khalil Mack taught him as a player and how much he liked working with him. And by the way, he had no real reason to talk about Khalil Mack. You could ask about him, sure, but like he's been very removed. He's been in L.A., Khalil Mack's been in Chicago. This is Brandon Staley going to get his guy, which I love this. And um, pairing Joey Bosa on one side of your defensive line with Khalil Mack on the other side to get after the quarterback is a terrifying, terrifying thought. And honestly, I feel, I look at this trade and go, The Raiders are in trouble. The Raiders are squarely the worst team in that division. They are at the bottom of a mountain looking up at the Chargers and Justin Herbert and Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa, the Chargers and all their success and Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey and the Denver Broncos roster and Russell Wilson. And if you're the Raiders, you're like, how are we supposed to win this division? Nothing's impossible, but... I would not want to be the worst team in that division, even though the Raiders are a solid football team that made the playoffs last year. By the way, on top of all that, the Raiders traded away Khalil Mack at one point in 2018. Now they got to play a pissed off Khalil Mack two times a year. Would you want to do that? I would not want to do that. And I am very, very worried for the Las Vegas Raiders. I don't envy them. I don't envy (laughs) their, you know, you got a, a new head coach. You got a, a good quarterback, Derek Carr, but the worst quarterback in that division. And you're rebuilding compared to at least every other football team in this division. I just, I cannot imagine that uh, 
Josh McDaniels, the head coach, is too excited about the really big monumental task in front of him. And uh, I, it, it's funny, like all this stuff keeps happening in the AFC West. Russell Wilson, I'm sure Kansas City is going to do something this offseason. And Khalil Mack going to the Chargers. And all my attention keeps going over to the Raiders and going like, you poor souls. You guys made the playoffs last year. It might be a while before that happens again. Because you got potentially three playoff teams in your division that are better than you, let alone your own team. So um, I think the impact on the Raiders here with the Khalil Mack trade is the most devastating. And uh, look, the Khalil Mack revenge game is a real thing. He is going to come after. Like, like anytime you play, uh, I I, I felt this way whenever I played uh, football too, is the defensive guys that you practice against every day that can't hit the quarterback – all they want to do is take you out. Because day after day in practice, they're told to pull up. Don't hit the quarterback. Don't do it. And I'm sure Khalil Mack has played the Raiders before. But to get to play Derek Carr and the Raiders two times a year, to kind of get revenge against your former team that traded you away, feel bad for the Raiders, man. Feel bad for the Raiders. Good for Khalil Mack. He gets a coach who loves him. A really good spot for him to win a lot. And uh, – Chargers, man. You know, things didn't go the Chargers' way last year. They didn't make the playoffs. Uh, it's year two of Justin Herbert. You're one of a new coach, Brandon Staley, a rookie head coach. I expect the Chargers to be a lot better next year. And some of those moments where they fell just short and the results of them missing the playoffs, I think they're going to win those games that were close at the end that they, they maybe fell short in a couple times. So I expect a big step forward for the L.A. Chargers next year. Okay. Um, the Dallas Cowboys have traded wide receiver Amari Cooper to the Cleveland Browns. I don't understand why Dallas announced they were planning to release or cut Amari Cooper. Um, I, I think all they really did was hurt his trade value. You could have said, if I were, if I could go back in time and advise Dallas what to do, I'd say, put out there that you're trying to, I guess, no, it doesn't make sense. I would say, put out there that you're trying to keep him and do everything you can to try to keep the guy. And then at least people know that you are, you know, trying to keep him. Therefore, his trade value goes up a little bit. The minute they announced they're releasing or cutting, or at least he got leaked and reported that the Cowboys were planning to cut Amari Cooper, his trade value plummeted. And Dallas is planning to cut him because on March 20th, Amari Cooper is owed $20 million dollars. They can't afford that. And so they were going to cut him because cutting him or releasing him is better than doing nothing. Uh, how do I? No, let me back up and re-say this again. Trade, the reason why they traded him away is because if you release him, you get nothing for him. At least now if you trade him, you get something in return, which is better than just flat out releasing him. So Dallas got something for him. Cleveland made sure they got him. So Cleveland wins because if Amari Cooper hits the open market as a free agent receiver, you can't guarantee he's going to choose your football team to come play for you. Here are the trade details. The Browns get Amari Cooper. The Dallas Cowboys got a fifth-round pick, and they traded uh, sixth-round picks with Cleveland. Again, I go back to you, trading them away for Dallas is better than just cutting him. They got something in return. They got a fifth-round pick and a little higher pick in the sixth round. Amari Cooper is 27 years old. He'll be 28 in June. He's been in the NFL for seven years, and last year was Amari Cooper's least productive year as a pro. 68 catches, 865 yards, eight touchdown catches. He's still a very, very good receiver and going to be a massive help to this Cleveland Browns football team. He was a bit overshadowed last year by CeeDee Lamb, the other Cowboys young receiver who I thought, it's not that Amari Cooper wasn't really good, it's that CeeDee Lamb was just even better, so he got more targets and got, you know, he overshadowed Amari Cooper. Still, Amari Cooper can play, and it's good for Cleveland because they got rid of Odell Beckham Jr. last year. They need to do everything they possibly can to help their quarterback, Baker Mayfield. They got another stud receiver. Uh, they did announce that Jarvis Landry, uh, their, you know, their other receiver along with Amari Cooper, they gave Jarvis Landry permission to seek a trade. The problem is his salary cap number is so high, I can't imagine anybody wanting to trade for Jarvis Landry because they don't want to pay him the amount of money it's going to take, plus on top of that, having to put together some kind of trade package to get Jarvis Landry. I think Jarvis Landry is going to be stuck in Cleveland, but he can play alongside Amari Cooper. That sounds fun and interesting to me. So I think actually both teams won this trade. Cleveland got a receiver guaranteed if they wait till he got to free agency. Uh, there's no guarantees. 
In fact, it's pretty unlikely you get Amari Cooper to come sign with you in Cleveland. And Dallas, I go back to this, they got something in return for Amari Cooper rather than letting him walk away for free. Good for the Cowboys. However, though, Dallas should have never been in this position to begin with because they are massively overpaying their running back, Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott, their running back, is an over $18 million salary cap hit this year in 2022, which is just unacceptable for a running back who is losing value every time he runs the football, appears to be getting worse in the l- recent years, and uh, just a mistake. I-, I can't believe they're paying Ezekiel Elliott as much as they are and letting a good player like Amari Cooper walk away and leave the building. Okay, we have a question from the audience to end the show today. You can write into the show as well. Go to patreon.com forward slash Zach Schaumler. David wrote in. David said, hey, Zach, hope you're doing well. I am curious about your thoughts on the upcoming F1 season. Who do you think will win the Drivers and Constructors Championships? Personally, I think Charles Leclerc and Ferrari will win both championships. Keep up the great work, David. Um... I don't know how to make a prediction for this year's F1 season because all I really have are a bunch of questions. We haven't had a single race yet. We've had testing and, you know, the better teams have had fewer time doing certain tests. And so I want to tell you my questions going into the 2022 F1 season. And we'll see how those questions, you know, I'm going to set up the narratives now. And in a month or two from now, we can go, here's how those narratives are working out so far. So question number one. Is it a three-team race in Formula One? You got Ferrari, Mercedes, and Red Bull. Ferrari put a ton of development energy and money into this year. So I I guess my big question really is, is Ferrari the team to beat? Should they be the favorite in Formula One? And then we got a new guy coming to Mercedes, George Russell, elevating himself from Williams, a really, really talented driver, getting a promotion And I would assume that George Russell is an upgrade on former Mercedes driver Valtteri Bottas, who really was good enough to not have to challenge Lewis Hamilton, so they were able to win a Constructors' Championship again last year, but not good enough to give Lewis Hamilton often the support he needed. Uh, And so not only can George Russell give Lewis Hamilton the support he needs to help push people at the front of the race, but also... How much can George Russell challenge Lewis Hamilton this upcoming year for the Silver Arrows? I'm excited to find that out. Will Red Bull still be a contender? Because while Ferrari was looking ahead to this year, uh, Red Bull put all of their time and energy and development into last year. So Ferrari's been looking ahead, waiting for this moment. Red Bull put everything they had in the last year. So I I wonder how good is Red Bull going to be this year? Their, their driver in a very controversial way, Max Verstappen, won the Drivers' Championship. They got second to Mercedes in the Constructors' Championship. Is Red Bull even still a contender this year? We'll find that out. Uh, is McLaren the fourth best team? Is McLaren the best of the rest? How about Alpine? Is Alpine going to take a step forward in year two with Fernando Alonso at the helm? And I, I look, people don't like Fernando Alonso. I don't really understand that. Fernando Alonso is incredibly talented. He is a, man, he is a tough driver. He's hard to pass. He is kind of, how do I put this in a nice way? He's kind of a dick to drive against. He is going to block you and will not allow you to pass him. He's, he's a, a tough cookie, man. I, I really like Fernando Alonso and his style. He's kind of a bully on the track. Uh, and then are we going to get maybe a rivalry between Alpine and Aston Martin? Because Aston Martin's going into year two with Sebastian Vettel. These are both former world champions, Fernando Alonso and Sebastian Vettel. And can we get a rivalry maybe between Alpine and Aston Martin? How about Fernando Alonso versus Seb? That would be really fun and exciting to have. I really hope they have similar pace so that they can be regularly competing for a points finish between Seb and Fernando Alonso. And those two really talented drivers, I think I would love to see Seb and... Fernando Alonso driving a Mercedes because I think they are way more talented than their car will allow them to show. And I want them to be level and even because I want to see the battle between Fernando Alonso and Sebastian Vettel just head to head, really tight, really tough. I hope they have similar pace this year in 2022. Who has the best driver lineup? Is it Mercedes with George Russell and Lewis Hamilton? 
Maybe Ferrari with Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc. Probably should have said Charles Leclerc first. He's the number one driver there. Uh, Red Bull has Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. Where do McLaren with Lando Norris and Danny Ricciardo uh, shake out? Like, who has the best driver lineup in Formula One? We'll find out. Um, uh, probably Mercedes. But Ferrari's got a lot of pace. I'm excited to see if Ferrari can challenge Mercedes this year and kind of put themselves back near the top of Formula One after a couple of years that have been down for Ferrari. And then I look this year at the F1 schedule, and I'm, I'm very excited. My, one of my favorite things about Formula One is not just the racing, the storylines, all that. It's, it's the international presence of the sport. I, I get to see stuff on TV, cities and places and cultures that I have a hard time seeing any other way unless I watch Anthony Bourdain or something. You got a race, they're going back to Australia this year. Uh, I, I guess it's not different culture for me, but you got two races in the USA this year. You got... Miami on May 8th. You've got Austin, Texas on October 23rd. Brazil. Uh, by the way, I'll be in Austin, Texas in October, the weekend of that race. Maybe I'll try to get in. I don't think I can afford to even get in, but if there's a possible way, I can scalp a ticket and I can afford it and get in. You bet your bippy I'm going to get in and try to watch an F1 race. I don't care where I sit. I don't care if I'm the back of the nosebleeds, whatever that looks like in Formula 1. I don't care if I go to qualifying. If I can be on the premises while an F1 car drives by, I will be so happy. So I'm going to try to make that happen in Austin, Texas this year. I will see. I don't, I'm not confident, but worst case, I can go meet people and hang out outside the track. Is that weird? I feel like that's still somewhat normal. Uh, I think people do that. Uh, we're also going to Japan this year in October. Not me, but Formula One will be uh, on, in Japan this year. That's kind of cool. Japan's been shut down, and uh, my friend was visiting from Japan. Had to go back early because they shut down the border again. So with... The Rona ramping down. Japan might be opening up again. We're going to have an F1 race in Japan this year. It's very cool. Um, and I just think it's going to be a really great year in Formula 1. We do have Drive to Survive, the F1 series. It's out on Netflix now. Uh, season 4, I believe. I don't have any plans really to watch it yet. I will if I have time. I don't know that I can fit it in before the year starts. Uh, the first race next weekend, March 20th, is race number 1 in Bahrain. Um, I also don't find as much enjoyment in Drive to Survive as I used to when I was first getting into Formula One, because now I know the formula. I know they kind of trump stuff up. If you're not a fan of Formula One, you don't know Formula One very well, watch Drive to Survive. You're going to learn a lot. It's going to introduce you to characters in F1. But once you get to know the sport, uh, you kind of see through the intense dramatization of Formula One through Drive to Survive. But I will say it's a great way. It's solid entertainment, and it's a really good way to learn about the Less prominent teams like Haas or like Williams. Uh, so I don't know. I, Drive to Survive is out there if you want to watch it. Uh, nothing against it. I just don't. I, I'm busy as all get out. Free agency is happening. I don't think I can fit in eight episodes an hour each uh, of an F1 series that I'm not that into right now and I don't feel like covering. Um, you know, one final thought, by the way, is that Lewis Hamilton is 37 years old. He lost the world championship last year in A brutal, controversial way. Could we see Lewis Hamilton get his eighth world title this year, a world record? It's another interesting storyline. A lot of great stuff. It's going to be an incredible Formula One season, and uh, I am very, very excited for what is to come this year in F1. Guys, that is all I have for today. We had some controversial stuff. We talked about some trades. We talked about a heartwarming contract, Formula One, you saw me, Zach Schaumler, sweating bullets, getting really uncomfortable talking about stuff that I'm uncomfortable talking about. Uh, and I, I want to end on this note. I am not going to make a Deshaun Watson breakout, by the way. That's not my plan. Uh, I want, if people are going to listen to me talk about Deshaun Watson, I want people to listen to me talk about that topic in its entirety and to do a breakout and put out a 10-minute clip of me talking about Deshaun Watson I feel like it's too easy to put words in my mouth or I just, I, I, I want people to hear the full breadth of what I have to say, not listen to three minutes of a snippet of me talking about it. So I'm going to put out a full episode on YouTube and on podcast services. And I mean, it's the first time I've had Deshaun Watson in the title of anything in over a year. So if you really want to hear it, you can that way. I want to end by saying this. I, um, I, there's no good way to say this. I do not view myself in a self-righteous way, meaning that I have had one-night stands. I have had 
encounters with women and um, good, actually. In fact, I'm on my road trip, I got invited to go visit someone who was an old friend of benefits with, uh, with me in a city. I'm excited to see her. It'll be fun. Kind of, um, I, I just don't want to be presenting myself as holier than holy, judging people for having sex or judging people for this. I just know that in the past when I've had, um, sexual relationships, <laughs> and is, is this even appropriate to talk about on the show? I don't know, but I talked about Deshaun Watson and his escapades. I might as well acknowledge that I'm, I'm not a perfect human. And, the one thing I'm very proud of uh, in my sexual history is that I have been very careful to make my expectations uh, and my um, my intentions very clear to everyone. And, and usually I get invited back. And usually people who I have um, one night stands with or um, friends with benefits type situations with, almost all of them walk away a friend of mine, even, that still I keep in contact with to this day, and I'm very proud of that. That's why I say when I talk about Deshaun Watson, I would be horrified to find out that someone I had relations with in the past that I miscommunicated so badly that they felt like I crossed a line or had inappropriate conduct because I just don't operate that way. So for Deshaun Watson to have had 22 relationships to some level, with either him doing wrong or massive monumental miscommunications is wildly inappropriate and disappointing. And um, I, I would hope no one would ever come back from my past and say, Zach Schaumer did blah, blah, blah to me. I, I hope that never happens. I, I, I'm, I'm not perfect. I don't think that'll happen. Um, if it ever did, I, I would be very hor- like horrified and sorry because I, I, I don't. I've had one night stands, but if anyone walked away from that feeling um, the way anyone feels about Sean Watson, I would just be mortified. Um, that's never been my heart. So I, I just, when I talk about another man um, and his sexual escapades, I don't want to pretend like I haven't had my own. And I, I, I just have, I've worked really hard in my life to try to make sure that I was clear. I was on the same page of people. Uh, there was always consent. Um, and I, I would hope that Anyone from my past will look at me now and go, yeah, it's a, it's a good guy who who always tried to do the right thing. And um, I hope hopefully never have miscommunications like Deshaun Watson clearly had. Either miscommunications or just straight up wrong doing. Um, so, guys, that's enough talking about sex <laughs> on Strong Opinion Sports. Probably will never do that again. If you want to hear me talk about that stuff, go to Zach Schaumler Talking. Listen to my other podcasts. I, I talk about my personal life a lot more there. Uh, but I, I just didn't want to come across as self-righteous or judging someone without acknowledging my my history and my life, too. Um, I hope it wasn't too much. I hope I didn't make anybody uncomfortable. If I did, I'm sorry. You probably skipped out and left. Uh, but I want to say thank you so much for tuning into this episode, a weird one to make, one that was um, very uncomfortable for me, honestly. And, I mean, that's kind of why I wore just a, a bullshit workout shirt because I, I I don't feel I, I'm kind of throwing the I, I, I'm trying to throw everything out the window and say look I this is a very weird different episode intentionally I'm trying to be very casual I'm trying to um, talk to you like I would talk to a friend on the street I mean as I always do but I uh, I just want to say thank you for tuning in I love you I appreciate you and uh, have a great day but um bum bam we are done